Lights, camera, action. Welcome to Movie Makers, a Reckless Amoeba podcast. I am your host, Brandon Horvath, with Brandon Palinger and Ryan Stokely. Hey, guys. Hey, yo. This better be important. You've been pulling me away from Super Smash. Oh. Hopefully, we have everything sounding good because I'm recording on a pretty old computer. Brandon has a new microphone. And I think Ryan probably has the same audio setup, so don't worry yep. about him. He's fine. Do I yes. sound silky smooth yet? ASMR. ASMR. <laughs> Asthma. Asthma. Okay, guys. Um, are we ready to make a movie? Yes. I'm ready to oh. write a script. Let's let's go. Okay, today's words are fragrant, clean, waves, appliance, ambiguous, feeling, ocean, appreciate, dimes, needless. Oh my god. I already have a romantic, well, a romance movie in my head. I'm still upset that we lost the fastest fish surgeon. That was so good. Yes. That was one of the best. <laughs> that was... Okay, quick side note. That was a kid's movie about a surgeon who wanted to be... I mean, a fish who wanted to be a surgeon and with <laughs> lots of fish puns. We had sequels planned out and everything. But, okay, I have... Appreciating ocean waves. Hold on, hold As... on, hold on. I haven't rolled the dice yet. Let's see what the D4 decides. Oh, oh, so... I'm, I'm sorry. We got a three. Appreciating ocean waves. A, a romance movie. But since I'm, since we're all dudes here, we probably can't write romance. Whoa, so... whoa, whoa. Now you're just being sexist. We can write romance. I can't guarantee it'll be amazing, but we can write it and fail. <laughs> but but that would be fun if we fail. Wait, 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 wait. What about, um, I'm actually going to steal this from you, but what about a clean, ambiguous feeling? Okay. I have no idea what that means, but we can try <laughs> A clean, ambiguous feeling. We we can make it a thing. I don't know what it is, but we can work it out. But but sometimes movies don't like directly deal with their title. I mean, <laughs> with a name like a clean, like clean, ambiguous feeling, I think we need to figure out what it means. <laughs> Because that's going to be the question everybody has, is just, the fuck is even that? <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. What about, um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. I want to work fragrant into something here. How about clean, fragrant waves? Clean, fragrant appliances. <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking god. Turns into a horror movie where, like, whatever the appliance is, is trying to kill people with, like, deliciously amazing smells. It, it turns into, like, a horror comedy of my little, of the little toaster. <laughs> Brave little toaster, yes! <laughs> they get a horror comedy where it's like, I want to kill you, but all I can do is make things smell nice. <laughs> oh my god. No, 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 I was leaning more like, uh... No, it was it? It was fragrant, clean waves, and my thought was like, well, we could still do the whole romance thing, right? But have it centered around like a candle shop or something. No, no, no! Clean, fragrant waves and set it around a beach. How, how are the how are the waves fragrant? Is my is my question in that regard? Because there's something under the ocean that's. Now this is sounding sci-fi. I I was gonna go with Lovecraftian, but okay. Is it a mermaid? Maybe. 
But okay, fragrant a- clean Ariel pops wet. up and just starts spritzing fucking like perf- underwater perfume everywhere. Under the sea. <laughs> under the sea. This was Down me with no better. Under the sea. <laughs> what about this genitalia? <laughs> I said it was made from uh, Sebastian's genitalia. <laughs> oh Don't ask my me God. how I got it. Disney wouldn't like that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh. <laughs> I I like the idea of the clean, fragrant waves, and it just being Lovecraft horse shit. <laughs> I like I like that how the town's just being taken over by like fish monsters or something, and they're they're cleaning out the unclean humans. So do we want clean fragrant waves or fragrant <laughs> or your idea of no, free- no, no 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 let's make it a love story between a Lovecraftian horror and a fucking woman. <laughs> so it will be a horror comedy. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Granted, I think our last episode was horror too, but the one that went up, yes, yes, it was. Yes. <laughs> the The question is, though, do we make this animated, or do we have it like live action with CG? Uh I would say more stop motion. Like Nightmare Before Christmas, Ooh. um, Corpse Bride. I like it. Coraline. I like it. What Coraline, Tim Burton? Yes, I think so. Mm. Okay, so it's, yeah, yeah, so Tim Burton stop motion type of stuff. <laughs> oh my god, I like where this is going already. So. Where do we where do we start this? Do we start this with the woman or with the Lovecraftian horror under the sea? Uh, no, you know what? No, I got it. Okay. We need to start with like a flashback, right? To like either fishermen like discovering the horror by like fishing it out of the sea by mistake. Mm-hmm. Or um you need to do it with like the Lovecraftian horror, like finding its way into the into the town somehow. Okay. Um. Either it does it itself, or like I said earlier, it gets fished up or something. Maybe maybe it washes up on a beach. And since Tim Burton horror wasn't all that terrifying, will we make it light, creepy, or will this be like horror? I mean, you say that, but then we can flash back to fucking Willy Wonka and that horrifying goddamn love tunnel. Oh, that. Where it just got real freaky and messed up and horrifying to watch. The chicken, I'm pretty sure a chicken gets its head cut off. (laughs) Here's what I'm thinking, alright? Okay. Here's here's where I want to go with this, as far as, like, the opening goes. I think the opening should be that, like... Let's go with them catching a bunch of fish, right? And bringing it in. And let's just say that um, the horror itself is in fact like a parasite that was living off of the fish. Oh. I don't know who this woman's uh, husband would be, whether it would be like a fishmonger, you know, selling off fish, or if it would be one of the fishermen themselves. The, uh, the, The horror parasite thing jumps from the fish onto one of them and has like slowly over like the next few years taken full control however it's also like integrated the human's psychology into itself as well oh so this would be why it's like kind of falling in love with the woman uh the Mm. wife because Mm. of those uh human intelligence like messing with it will it be the woman's husband or will it be the hus- the woman's boyfriend because boyfriend would seem a little bit more interesting than 
husband. Here's the thing. Where do you want to set this? Because normally Lovecraftian stuff takes place in like 1800s. I was just about to say like 1800s ish. Like, late 1800s, maybe? It generally doesn't seem to have boyfriend things at that point, then. Like, normally, you're going to have a wife and a husband. You're not going to have so much. Like, it could be, although we'd have to change it from, like, a fisherman to, like, an apprentice fisherman at that point. Okay. Maybe um, the... Especially, that's if you want to make them younger, anyway. Um, well, I am it could, thinking... It could just be that he's sweet on her. That's possible. Yeah, I'm thinking, like, maybe early 20s. Okay. All right. Yeah, that will work. He's sweet on her. Um, and that's bleeding into like, what do we want to call this thing? All right. That's the next question. What do, what do we have? Do we have a name for this thing? Um. Um. Because I'm trying. I'm trying to think of something that would be suitably Lovecraftian. Kelsaloth. Hmm. I don't think that's one that exists already. I think Kelsaloth would work. Like the name of the cre creature. Yeah, the name of the parasite itself. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forget. Been a while since I read. Nope, Kelsaloth is not one that exists. I'm going to call it Kelsaloth at this point. Okay, Kelsaloth. Or Kel for short. Yes. He he has a brother named Keenan somewhere in the sea still. <laughs> so Keenan Saloth. <laughs> Keenan Saloth. <laughs> Keenan and Kel. Exactly. Yeah. You get the reference. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Kel has infected this guy. He's getting, like, you could technically say contaminated by, like, the human intelligence that's in there. Mm hmm Now, obviously, he still needs to have his attachment to, say, like, Cthulhu or one of the big ones. Um, For now, we can make, we can change it later, but for now, let's go with Cthulhu. Classic. Can't, can't not do that. <laughs> um, and... Obviously, he's probably got, like, his orders from up on high to turn the town. But he doesn't want to turn the woman that he's in love with. Let's just go with Sarah as a name. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to turn Sarah. He loves Sarah. And in turn, Sarah... Obviously, she doesn't realize it's happening at first, but she loves him. Like, she, she doesn't realize that Kel has, like, taken over her, like, fiancé at the moment. Uh, and I, I guess you could say, like, we just see them getting closer and closer as things go on, but Kel is slowly also mutating, like, the body. I was just going to say, will there be mutation involved uh, yes, down there the has line? to be. Like, he, he tries to hide it, like, a tentacle pops out of the nipple or something, and he's, like, trying to cover <laughs> it up. <laughs> or his skin is just turning this all scaly orange and he I was really... gonna say like he's sickly pale and slimy okay um you know like fish oil and stuff oh uh, okay like the body starts getting like that vacant kind of like fish stare <laughs> and she's like what, what, what's wrong like god what do we want to call like the uh the man that he took over like let, let's just go with you know, Jonathan like, what Jonathan. Fine. Okay. I was going to go with Tim, but Jonathan works too. Oh, oh Jonathan. What? You look so ill. Is something wrong? N no, no, it's fine, dear. Oh, no. It's, it's, don't worry. It's just, it's a condition. I'm walking through it. I've, I've seen the doctor. <laughs> we, ha we have TARDIS sound effects. No, kidding. And then his eyes blink separately. Yeah, yeah it's like blink, <laughs> blink. <laughs> like how Fry blinks from Futurama. <laughs> There's points where he's, like, out at midnight where we get scenes of him talking to Cthulhu, like, as he's just out at the ocean. Sarah maybe, like, walks up on him, like, realizing uh, something's been wrong. And, like, she walks up on him doing that. And it's like, Sarah, what are you doing here? <laughs> oh, well, I I like taking walks on the beach at night. It's It's quite calming, you know, when my nerves are rattled. And, you know, they have a nice little love scene in there where they, like, get... Not intimate, but, like, they, they start getting more close. All the while, Cthulhu's, like, still talking inside of Kel's head. Like, change her. I don't want to. Change her. No! Are you even listening to me, Kel? No, no, yes! 
Not this one. This one is mine, master. Please. Perhaps I can make a small concession. The, the rest of the town will be yours. She, She's for me. Please. Fine. <laughs> but like the problem is he's like like working against his own nature to just consume everything uh like mentally consume everything and like i feel like sarah would start having problems right like mentally she would start having problems because that's the way this like lovecraftian shit works right i'm kind of thinking that cthulhu cthulhu should kind of have a darth palpatine voice that's fine we can do that well even then like if we give him that voice my thought would be like we don't understand what he's saying maybe like even when Kel is talking to him it's a language no one can comprehend the only way we have any idea what's happening is probably through like subtitles, subtitles. um and that's only because again like if, if they were talking like face to face or something you could get away with like body motions and shit but these two are talking mentally Okay. Mm. So you would need subtitles in that regard. Like, we get the audio of the mental communication, but we get subtitles to decipher it. Okay. Will will there be some kind of trippy aura around their mental conversation? Well, the thing is, right, I don't think we ever see Cthulhu, really. Okay. Like, the idea for Cthulhu and all of the other, like, big old gods like that is that they want to get into our world but they need to use, like, humans and shit to do it. Okay. Like, the idea is that they are so vast and, like, unknowable. It, it's essentially, like, the idea of, like, dropping a, like, full-on 3D sphere into a 2D world. Like, that 2D person is going to look at it and be like, what the shit is that thing? And it'll just constantly morph and change because they cannot perceive what it actually is. They do not have that third dimension. Oh, okay. So, in Cthulhu's case, if he were brought in, he would constantly be shifting and changing. Because he would be 4D. He would be 4 or any other multiple of D. He would not be 3, he would be more than that. 36 double D. He could, look, he could be a 20D. Or a D20. I'll see, he gets the joke. Yes. Alright, so... I Again, I'm feeling like Sarah would, like, start having her own mental issues at some point during this, right? Like, obviously, Kel is doing something that's affecting all of them. Perhaps he's, like, getting more of his, like, parasite brethren mixed into, like, the drinking water. Mm-hmm. Um, or, like, as a fisherman, he's helping them haul up more fish in the area where there's, um more of his brethren. Maybe even Keenan Sarath shows up somewhere. <laughs> Takes over someone. Oh, I just thought of the way this is ending with people being infected and people adapting to human society. Maybe, in the end, they will have a lesser, lesser god town mixed in with human society like oh hey jehoris the fifth like like <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry like hey mike and, th and then you see like jehor just pull out some weird weapon and it's like oh jehor <laughs> what is turning into a shit sitcom <laughs> Lovecraftian sitcom! Oh my god. <laughs> Christmas with Cthulhu. <laughs> Alright, so... Again, I, I was trying to say... Uh, Sarah is probably getting through her own like mental problems. Like She probably isn't infected herself as... We've had that quote-unquote deal with Cthulhu and Kel. Fine. This one will be yours. But the town is mine. She is unaffected by, like, the parasites. That's a thing. Like, she can drink the drinking water. Nothing's going to affect her. It's just going to pass through her. The, le the, like, parasites won't stick. But okay. is the entire town being infected? Yes. Or The rest of oh. the town is being infected. Slowly but oh. surely. 
Now, obviously, because they are humans and because the whole, like, infection thing isn't full takeover, it's like, I'm going to say, like, in most cases, it's probably, like, 90-10, 90% parasite, 10% uh, host infection. Okay. So, like, they still have all of their, like, regular bodily movements and all that shit. They can, they can pass as human. They know enough. Okay. Except they kind of look different. They look off. They look off. They don't... Mm-hmm. Like, you stick them next to somebody else, and it's like, something just doesn't seem right, but I can't put my finger on it. But Sarah starts having her own mental issues, and, like, maybe she's seeing things, maybe she's getting, like, different kind of, like, weird feelings and shit. Like, and, and she starts noticing that it's only when she's around Kel, for the most part. Um... Until the rest of the town is fully infected anyway. Then mm-hmm. it's just constant. Oh. Um, like, she probably get images of, like, what she can try to perceive as Cthulhu. Or, like... Maybe? What, what Kel is, really. Like, underneath the human skin. Maybe? I, I think... I'm not quite sure where we go with this, but I think by, like, the end... There's probably a chase scene where, like... Sarah's running away because she's, like, seeing shit. And, like, Kel's like, no, wait, no, come back. And whatever she's seeing is just, like, overlaid on top of Kel. Like, she's seeing, like, a uh, Lovecraftian horror image that's just taking the place of what where Kel is at all times at this point. Mm-hmm. So you probably have that, that kind of a chase scene going on. Um, I think by the end of it, what ends up happening is, like, Cthulhu gets his way one way or another, right? He may not have, like, direct possession through, like, the parasites on Sarah, but Sarah might become, like, his oracle or whatever to help try and bring him into the world. Oh, so this will be a bad end. I think what we want is it sets up for the sequel. I think this movie is just the town getting taken over. Because I was half thinking of adding just a little bit more romance elements. Oh, no, you, you can still in, have that. Like I said, I'm kind of skipping over the middle part at this point. Like, into, maybe once she gets used to the visions and shit, we start having, like, the tr- like the actual romance between her and Kel. My initial thought, and not to, like, completely destroy your storyline, was that he mutates a bit more visually into like 25% Lovecraft horror and Kel actually falls in love with her. Well, that that's what I've been saying from the start, right? Yeah. And she starts to say like, so my husband isn't, isn't around anymore or my boyfriend isn't around anymore. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Like I'm him now. And I, I was going more along the lines of, like, she realizes that her husband is, like, or, like, boyfriend at that point is dead. Like, the the idea is, like, this isn't happening over weeks. This is happening, like, over a couple of years. Okay. And, like, she realizes, and she, she probably doesn't know how long it's been going on, but she realizes what she's fallen in love with is not the man he was originally. It's this new th- hybrid, I guess is a good way to put it. Okay, yeah, that's a good choice of words. Um, and, and yeah, the, the love is probably real. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna front on that. Now, obviously, you know, mental problems aside, mm-hmm. um, which you know, y- you can make your own interpretations as part of the audience as to whether or not that's affecting her directly in that regard. Mm-hmm. But no, she, I feel like that love would be like more or less. It'd be real. It'd be like 90% real, maybe 10%, you know, the mentality getting fucked with. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, my, my thought would be like, yes, that love is there. So and there, can, would... there can be sweet moments in there, too. Mm-hmm. I just don't know where we're putting them exactly. So would there be a fight against Cthulhu? Cthulhu is quote-unquote defeated by Sarah, and then you find out he's not really. I'm still leaning toward the ending where Sarah willingly becomes his oracle. Okay, willingly becomes. Yeah, not 
not against it. Like, part of it is probably because she's still in love with Kel, right? Yes. Um, I'm feeling like she's in love with Kel. This is something that, you know, his boss or whatever, if you want to call him a boss at that point, wants. Um, and she's willing to go along with it for him. So she willingly becomes his oracle in order to help bring Cthulhu into the world. Hmm. Which sets up for the sequel of actually trying to bring either, either either A, trying to bring Cthulhu in, or B, spreading more of the parasites to the rest of the country. Hmm. So that there's a Cthulhu nation. Maybe? <laughs> Maybe? So it will be more R-rated horror than PG-rated horror. No, it'd, be, it'd probably be like PG thirteen. Okay. Uh, I don't. I don't see outright like horrible, horrible violence anywhere in this. Like, obviously, oh. you're gonna be like seeing mentally weird things. Okay, because when we determined it was going to be stop motion. I was thinking a little bit more kid friendly then. I'd lean toward PG thirteen, and that's only okay. because of like the mental mess up and shit. Okay. Um, and probably like weird visuals. Just because again, men- mentality and like seeing things and stuff. I w- I would lean oh. more toward PG thirteen. Okay. Okay. Um, but I don't see R rated. At least not for this one. Maybe in the sequel depending on where things go. But we're, we're here for this current one. Yes. So I say PG-13 for this one. If there is a way to get it down to a PG rating, uh, we could try. But I'm not sure what that would constitute off the top of my head. But is there anything you want to add, Orion? Because you've been, you've been silent lately. Um, not really. I've been like in and out. <laughs> oh no. Um No. It, hold on, hold on. I got an idea. Can we make Keenan Saloth the Wilson stand in from Home Improvement? Yes. Where you only ever see half his face and he's constantly peering over the fence. But will will the top half of his face be ho- like horribly mutated? <laughs> I I head. think you'll see like at, at, at the edges of his hair, like there's probably like fish scales starting to sprout. Hey neighbor, how's it going? Heidi ho, <laughs> Kel, how's it going? They ever see it's like just tentacles. <laughs> you know, like when he reaches over the fence, like you see, it's like a tentacle rather than a hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I don't know. Sarah's not feeling right, Keenan. I I don't get it. She I don't know if she doesn't love you anymore. Here you go, Kel. Have this love potion I brewed the other day. It should help. Just slip <laughs> it into her food. <laughs> Did, did, oh, did Cthulhu Baltimore. tell you to do this? No, Keenan or Kel, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Just as like the blink blink. <laughs> oh damn. Like like even when like he's not behind the fence, he's got like a fucking handkerchief around his face or something. Or a bandana around his face. So you can't see anything below the nose. <laughs> oh my god it's so great <laughs> Just the fucking reference is beautiful <laughs> alright I think that's a wrap unless there's something else somebody wants to add do, do we have any casting ideas at all um Maybe for Cthulhu, whoever does a Palpatine voice, okay. maybe kind of have it like Palpatine esque. I'd like a deeper version of Palpatine, but yes. Okay. Just because he's supposed to be like this really old god and imposing as shit. 
So, um, maybe Seth MacFarlane, since I know he's done Palpatine. If he can make that a deeper voice, yes. Like a deeper voiced Palpatine, I'd be mm. in for it. Um, because there's always, like, audio editing where you That's can... That's true, you can pitch it down. down. Actually, even better, right? I just thought of this. What if we get him to read, like, multiple lines, right? And you just <laughs> layer them over top of each other and pitch them down. So, so it's, it's... So weird and garbled. Oh. And because he's so, like, ancient and, like... I want to say omnipotent, but I'm not 100% sure in the lore if he is. But, like, strong, imposing, um, dark. Like, you get that feeling of just, like, he knows a shit ton. Oh, okay. And, like, he could kill you in an instant if he was able to. Okay. Like, I don't know how much Cthulhu is going to show up. Obviously, we'd have a scene with Kel, like, mentally speaking with him at one point or another. We probably have multiple where he's like communicating mentally with Cthulhu. Will we like as the movie goes on, will we see like a shadow or some like edge of a tentacle to show that like Cthulhu is getting stronger, like the presence of him is getting stronger? You know, here's what I want to here's part of the thing, right? I think when we like do a pullback shot away from the town, there's like how do I want to put this? Not a reflection, but like, you know how, like, when you see water, how it's got, like, that, like, glimmer to it um, when light hits it, right? Mm hmm. Maybe that glimmer is kind of in the shape of, like, a Cthulhu tentacled face. Oh. Maybe. Maybe when Sarah, like, willingly becomes the Oracle and starts, like, getting visions of him, it's, mm -hmm. like, this dark and, like, um,. How do I want to put this? Dark and, like, really shadowed, like, figure from behind, like, a deep fog that she can barely, like, make out. I but just... will there be an occasional joke, since this will be, like, horror comedy, will there be a joke of Cthulhu, because he's so old, his mind is slipping just a little bit? Kind of like, no, I, I like no the idea master. where it's like she would mention something about like current technology of that time, and he's like, "I don't know what your newfangled iPods is." Yeah, or I'm about to call my lover Sarah. Like, yes, Cthulhu. It's called a, it's called a telephone. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I, I don't think telephones were, were... Were they around then? If it wasn't, it was telegrams at that point. But yes, same idea. Or like, he just doesn't... He doesn't really grasp what it actually is. Um, 1876, the telephone was invented. So if it's late so, yeah, 1800s... Late, 80s, late, late 1800s will be good. Okay. Um, But yeah, again, I the idea of it just being like... What the fuck is that shit? I don't understand. What do you mean a telephone? Oh, man. <laughs> but, like, if there is, like, a scene in the sequel where Cthulhu comes out, it's just it's just fucking Cal trying to teach him how to use a fucking telephone. <laughs> it's like, why would I ever do this if I could just talk to people mentally? It's like, but you can talk to people you don't have control of mentally now, like, like verbally now. <laughs> and your voice can carry to them through the phone and you can uh, possess them that way oh you young kids the applications are endless now how do I push these what did you call them buttons it's a dial back then remember oh that's right that's right so I just spin this thing <laughs> it, it's like and now you just gotta remember the number you I need to remember numbers. Do you realize how much is up here right now? <laughs> I have so much memory that I can barely remember anything new. And you want to teach me more numbers. Although we didn't get to like the funnier bits in the movie, I would expect there would be like a handful. Oh, there will be. Like there will definitely be like some 
fucking stupid or awkward comedy. Especially, like, if anyone would, like, come in from out of town, there would definitely be, like, these awkwardly funny moments between, like, the Cthulhu, uh, like, the parasite-possessed people and the out-of-towners just, like, communicating or trying to with each other. <laughs> Like, like, do you remember how in Men in Black, where the one guy that gets, like, possessed by the alien has, like, all these herky-jerky motions? Oh, yeah. I imagine something <laughs> weird like that would be going on with some of them. Like, as they're getting used to having possession of the body. Okay. And, like, the the guys from out of town would be like, You, uh, you doing all right, Jim? You're very fine. But, like we get some Boomhauer from like the fucking uh, King of the Hill kind of speech going on. <laughs> but, like every other word is just kind of like actual English, and it's like yeah, and like the the in-law, the guys coming in and it's like oh yeah, like like they don't even notice it. It's like he's always talked this way. It's always been weird like this. <laughs> Oh, I haven't seen you in 14 years. How's it going? Taco. New food. Oh, yeah. Those Mexicanos got those tacos. They're really tasty, aren't they? Uh, (laughs) Toilet in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, it does make you have to go a lot, doesn't it? (laughs) But man, oh. that taste is worth it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Call me sometime. I'm not calling the numbers. <laughs> I'll definitely call you later than that, Duddy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, well, I guess the lights are coming on in the theater. That's our app. Let's go. That's your app. So, until next week when we talk about a all new movie that will probably never come to theaters. We'll never see the light of day. <laughs> yes. Theaters. Not TV. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so until then, later. Bye. See you.